Frank, I'm obsessed throughout my life with those same handful of questions which uh, bother many people. Uh, was there a beginning? What happened before the beginning? Uh, will there be an end? What happens after the end? How does our life, how does all sentient life, life at all, fit within this ma matrix of sorts? It, it, is there, is, are these separate questions that we need to deal with, or it feels like it, if there's a unit, is there a unity here? Robert, they're all the same questions as physics tells us. Physics tells us that the universe began 13.7 billion years ago in the initial singularity. Now, the initial singularity is something beyond space and time. It's not matter, it's not space, it's singularity stuff. <laughs> now, um, it's of zero size, so the laws of physics cannot apply to it. No conceivable laws of physics can constrain the initial singularity. It is better to think of the laws of physics as being created, evolved at the same time as space, time, and matter by the initial singularity. If we look today, we know that everything which we see around us had an earlier cause, which themselves had yet an early, earlier cause, and so on. But these causes do not go back into the past indefinitely. All causes start at the initial singularity, which is the uncaused first cause. Which some people call? God. <laughs> Moses Maimonides and St. Thomas Aquinas, in fact, and I think correctly, identified God as the uncaused first cause. They said, if you have found the uncaused first cause, you've found a God. Well, I guess there are only two possibilities. You have an infinite regress of one something causing something causing forever, or you get back to a point where you have something that was an uncaused first cause. Exactly. You can't, there's no other alternative. There is no alternative, and physics tells us which it is. 13.7 billion years ago, there was the initial singularity. In the far future, there will be a final singularity, that will be the ultimate cause, the ultimate future cause to which uh, all of reality is heading. But physics tells us that the initial singularity and the final singularity are really one and the same singularity. So when it's all over, does that mean it's like it never existed? No, because you have the whole of reality. You have all of these wonderful experiences, which we are now enjoying and listening to this program. Yeah. Um, these experiences are real. This is reality. But there is a more fundamental foundation for reality, and that is the cosmological singularity, which creates this reality in which we find ourselves and controls it, guides it at all times. And is this a one-time event from the initial singularity, an expansion, and then for some reason a contraction back to that singularity? Or might this happen countless numbers of times? Well, in what physics tells us is that actually there are an uncountable infinity of these occurring at the same universal time. All possibilities are actually represented in the whole of what's called the multiverse that we have all possible universes out there, and not only all possible universes consistent with these physical laws which the singularity has created, but um, an uncountable infinity of each possibility. So what would be the point of having more than this? <laughs> you have all possibilities represented. If you wish, you can just limit your time to one of those and then say, well, let's look at another one and let's now look at another one. But you've got all possibilities there anyway. in the whole ensemble. Yes, there's no point in having any more than that. <laughs> what could be more than everything?